Women in the Commonwealth Caribbean continue to experience a combination of subsystemic material and ideological barriers that thwart their full participation in the practices of governance nationally and at the community level. In her paper on political party financing and women's political participation in the Caribbean, Author Cynthia Barrow-Giles documents Pamela Nicholson as being one of the few female politicians who rose above cultural challenges to be included among the most successful women candidates in the region, having won four consecutive general elections. The formidable female parliamentarian, Pamela Nicholson, 1945 to present. Pamela Nicholson was the only person from Tobago to serve in both constituencies, Tobago East and Tobago West. Additionally, she was the first female Tobago Member of Parliament to become a high-profile government minister. For a politician, that is a remarkable number of firsts. Pamela Noreen Nicholson was born in the seaside village of Charlotteville, Tobago on January 21, 1945 to Margaret and Maurice Nicholson. Her mother was a housewife, and her father made a living as a proprietor from his 20-acre cocoa estate. The family had eight children, five girls and three boys. Two of those siblings are since deceased. As a child, Pamela attended the Charlotteville Methodist Primary School, and as a secondary school student, she received her education at Bishop's High School. It appeared that during her sojourn at Bishops, Pamela showed an interest in athletics and was particularly enthusiastic about netball and table tennis. Upon leaving secondary school, Nicholson taught for a brief period at the Montgomery Government Primary School. She then left Tobago and entered the University of the West Indies in 1973, where she studied history, literature, and sociology until 1976. After earning her degree, she returned to Tobago and accepted a job at her alma mater where she taught for one year. From Bishops, she was assigned to the Scarborough Secondary School where she taught until 1981. Shifting careers from teaching to politics, Nicholson acknowledges that her interest in politics was always simmering, but she believes that it was really the black power movement of the 1970s that caught her attention. The first thing that excited me, re consciousness and so on, was when you had the Black Power movement. At that time, her parliamentary representative and other politically conscious people in her community were questioning the policies of Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister, Dr. Eric Williams, and his party, the People's National Movement, as they specifically related to Tobago. It was on this fervent issue that she was drawn into the realm of active politics, which officially began when she joined the Democratic Action Congress, the DAC, led by A.N.R. Robinson, who had exited the PNN in 1971. Based on her association with Robinson's DAC, Nicholson was deeply involved in the development of the Tobago House of Assembly, the THA, which governs the island today. The THA began in 1976 after a motion was put forward for internal self-government for Tobago. 
an acute observer of political development in the two islands, Nicholson is of the view that the motion was not challenged by the House of Representatives, based in the Parliament in Trinidad, because Prime Minister Dr. Williams, as an historian, would have understood the importance of internal self-government. Therefore, he would not have denied the people of Tobago self-determination. The struggle for the Tobago House of Assembly the modern Tobago House of Assembly emerged. Ian R. Robinson moved the motion for internal cell government seconded by Winston Murray. And that was passed in the House. Williams did not um, challenge it. I believe he did not challenge it because of um, his education from a historian perspective, you know, he was, a, he was deep in that and he recognized, he knew that nothing is wrong with internal self-government. These people are right, but I'm going to give them some problems. From the acceptance of the motion, a joint select committee of both houses of parliament was appointed to ascertain the views of the people of Tobago. This committee would then make its recommendations to parliament. As opinions were sought from those who wished to contribute to the motion being proposed, Nicholson was chosen to lead a three-person team from the Democratic Action Congress to address the Joint Select Committee. During these consultations, Chairman of the Committee Arnold Tomasas felt that Pamela Nicholson acted in a contemptuous manner because she had expressed the view that the committee should have made the journey to Tobago to meet with the people directly. In Nicholson's opinion, it was simply logical that talks about the establishment of a Tobago House of Assembly should be held on Tobago soil. This incident gave a brief glimpse into the character of Nicholson, who would later demonstrate that she was not intimidated easily. It also revealed a strong passion for Tobago and all matters concerning its governance. It is Nicholson's claim that the appointment of a joint select committee was a strategy of the government at the time to control the structure and strength that self-government would take in Tobago. As history would indicate, the initial administrative and operational structure of the THA were severely diluted from what was envisioned, but later the original formula proposed by her political leader A.N.R. Robinson was eventually implemented. After the THA began with Robinson as its first chairman, Nicholson found herself working more closely with him and other prominent politicians, including James O'Geist. Being a vibrant member of the DAC, her contribution to the party impacted positively on its consecutive wins in the THA elections held every four years between 1980 to 1996. It was not until the 2004 elections that Nicholson would witness the PNM gaining control of the THA by a majority eight seats in the 12-seat assembly. Although she took an avid interest in the THA as far as its objective to institute internal self-government, Nicholson's passion for her native Tobago was channeled towards achieving further goals on the national stage through the Parliament of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. In 1981, Nicholson ran as a candidate for Tobago East, one of two parliamentary seats allotted to the island. She won and became the first female member of parliament for Tobago. So the East seat was there and they said nobody else but Pam because she's from Charlottesville. Five years later, Nicholson ran for the Tobago West seat under a National Alliance for Reconstruction ticket a three-party political alliance now headed by Robinson, who had returned to national politics. With Robinson contesting her incumbent Tobago East seat, Nicholson gained the Tobago West seat, thereby making her the only person to have served in both Tobago seats, East and West. Tobago's representation was strengthened through this dynamic team, with Nicholson being as prominent a politician as the high-profile Robinson. As an MP, Nicholson served four terms in Parliament, 1981 to 1986, 1986 to 1991, 1991 to 1995, and 1995 to 2000. Three terms were spent as the representative for Tobago West and one for Tobago East. 
About her first term in office, Nicholson recalls the Susu land project being one of her significant achievements. Capitalizing on the terms of the project, she had organized for the new Grange estate in Tobago to be purchased, developed, and sold cheaply to poor and needy people in her constituency at the excellent price of $7,000 per lot. These lots now contain beautifully constructed houses and very satisfied constituents. People who want lands, people who are poor and needy, who want lands, John came up with the idea that we could probably, you know, get estates, buy estates from people and put in the infrastructure and sell as cheaply as possible to the poor and the needy. In her second term in office, Nicholson had entered Parliament as a member of the NAR and would witness her Tobago East parliamentary colleague, A.N.R. Robinson, become the first Tobagonian Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Robinson, in turn, appointed Nicholson, a junior minister in the Ministry of Education, to Education Minister Clive Panton. It appeared that this position in itself was one that she enjoyed. The challenge came in 1988, when NAR political ally Baz Pande and his team pulled away to form their own party, the United National Congress. At this point, Nicholson, being part of the majority NAR government, was reappointed to the portfolio of Minister of Housing, Settlements and Public Utilities. Here, the fiery politician encountered a variety of problems associated with a large ministry that directly involved daily living, such as shelter and the supply of essential services, including water and electricity. For instance, she had to resolve a situation immediately where apartments in the new housing developments at Maloney and La Hoqueta in East Trinidad were causing distress to residents. Nicholson had to take the drastic decision to have some of these houses reconstructed and refurbished and to reduce the rents the tenants were paying. Another example that required swift intervention was assisting residents at Never Dirty in Morva, East Port of Spain, to purchase lands on which they were squatting since they were facing eviction. Nicholson organized these affected residents into a cooperative and lobbied for them to access a bank loan to buy the land in dispute. Then came the 1995 general elections, which produced the following results. The PNM, 17 seats. The UNC, 17 seats. And the Robinson-led NAR, the two Tobago seats. Although the NAR only won two seats, they were the most significant seats, as it now placed Robinson, and by extension Nicholson, in the envious position of deciding which party to ally themselves with to form the next government. Robinson chose Pandey's UNC and was appointed Minister Extraordinaire. Nicholson was made Minister of Sport and Youth Affairs. Under this new portfolio, which would reawaken her enthusiasm for athletics and sports, Nicholson had many outstanding achievements, but she is particularly proud of the construction of four football stadia to allow Trinidad and Tobago to host the International FIFA World Under-17 Football Tournament. These were the Dwight York Stadium in Tobago and the Manny Ram John, Larry Gomes and Atto Bolden Stadia in Trinidad. The Hazley Crawford National Stadium was also refurbished during this project. She also lists her initiation of construction of the St. Paul Street Multipurpose Center in East Port of Spain as a significant milestone. A disciplined politician, Nicholson remembers combining her ministerial duties with constituents' requests while upholding personal standards of justice, fairness, and social equity. She recalls that while working with the Board of National Housing, her policy was that the most needy should receive housing first, and that service should be given to all in the community, not just party supporters. Having retired now from active politics, Pamela Nicholson is still referred to today as Sister Pam, a nickname she earned for her forthright manner and vociferous representations in public life. Reflecting on her life as a parliamentarian, Nicholson states, as a female politician, people look forward to so many things from you. Yet she did not let these expectations overcome her.
Instead, she met all her challenges with determination and embraced her years of service to Trinidad and Tobago. For her efforts, Nicholson felt richly rewarded when she was honored by the Friends of the Library in Tobago in 2004, an organization that acknowledges important Tobagonians who are outstanding in their chosen careers. An insight into the parliamentary personality of Nicholson reveals a fearless advocate of the many causes she articulated in the cabinet, the House of Representatives, and throughout her public life. Inclusive were gender issues and cultural matters, but a steadfast focus on Tobago remained high priority on her agenda. Today, Nicholson's opinions are still heard on a local Tobago radio station as the former activist and formidable parliamentarian whose voice boomed through the chamber of the lower house continues to speak out to a captive audience.